Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out Android on the all new LarkBox Pro. I recently posted a review video on the Pro version and I'm actually a big fan of it when it's running Windows 10, but I had a few people ask me to test out Android, so that's what we're going to do in this video. As you can see, I have this connected to a touch capable monitor. This is the Pepper Jobs XT13. But for the video, I'm going to plug this in the game capture so we can get a better look at it because Bliss OS is more suited for a mouse and keyboard. But if you do have a touch compatible monitor, the LarkBox will work with touch over USB. The version of Android that I'm going to be testing out in this video is Bliss OS 11. It's actually based on Android 9, but they do have an Android 10 version, which is experimental. The LarkBox Pro was never meant to run Android, but since we have an x86 CPU, we have a ton of different operating systems that we can install, including Android x86, Bliss OS, Phoenix, or whatever version of Android you'd like to run. But I gotta say, if you do end up picking one of the LarkBox Pros up, I would just stick with Windows or Linux on it. This is more of an experimental test here. Like I mentioned, I had a few viewers asking about it, so I figured we'd go ahead and create a video. If you're not familiar with the Chewy LarkBox Pro, they're claiming that this is the world's smallest 4K capable PC, and it's a really great performer for what you're getting here. I mean, this form factor is super tiny. We don't have much I.O., and I have done a full review on this. I'll leave a link for that in the description if you're interested. But before we jump right into Android, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on the basic specs. For the CPU, we have the Intel Celeron J4125, 4 cores up to 2.7 GHz. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 600 up to 750 MHz. We have 6 GB of LPDDR4 RAM and 128 GB of internal storage, but this little PC does have an M.2 slot and it will support up to a 1TB 2242 M.2 SSD, so if you want to expand the storage, it's actually pretty simple. Now these were going for $179 on Amazon. I think they're sold out now, but definitely keep an eye there because they might come back in stock at any time. It comes preloaded with Windows 10 Home 64-bit, and in my opinion, this is a very capable little Windows machine. But now, I want to see how Android runs on the LarkBox Pro. Okay, so here we are. Bliss OS running on the LarkBox Pro. Real quick, we'll open up Ida64. And as you can see, we're under system here. We have the LarkBox Pro, Android x86, 6 gigs of RAM. This is DDR4 running at 2133. For the CPU... We have that J4125 all the way up to 2.7 gigahertz quad core and the UHD 600 graphics up to 750 megahertz. Now I'm only running this at 1080p because there's not a lot of 4K support with Android x86 at least in apps and video playback, but it can be run at 4K if you really wanted to. The first thing I usually do is run a few benchmarks. We have 3D Mark. And this is only supporting OpenGL right now. There is a Vulkan option when you're booting this up, but unfortunately it just won't load that Vulkan driver up. So I can only run OpenGL, which still performs pretty decently on this little box. So for Slingshot Extreme, 1860. And finally, Geekbench 5. Single core, 460. Multi-core, 1625. I also ran the same test while I was running Windows on the LarkBox Pro, and with Android we actually got a higher multi-core score. So as you can see, it's got a very desktop-esque layout here, and it definitely works a lot better with a keyboard and mouse. We do have full Google Play support, so if we want to head over to the Play Store, you can download basically anything. But keep in mind, since we're running x86, there are a few apps that just won't be listed on the Google Play Store. But I have downloaded a bunch of apps to test out that do work with x86, so the first thing we're going to test out is a little bit of video playback, then we'll move over to some native Android gaming, and finally, emulation. So as you can see, when you start up an app, it's not going to go quite full screen. Now you can drag this around if you want to, you can minimize it, you can make it larger, or if we click this up in the top right hand corner, it'll go totally full screen. And we can close it down just like we would with an Android device. So we'll go with this one real quick. I'll just make sure I'm at 1080p. That's as high as we can go here, so I'll go to 1080p 60. And you're not going to have any issues playing back 1080p 60 video from YouTube using Android on the LarkBox Pro. After all, with Windows, this little box actually does 4K video playback or 4K streaming really well, so I had no doubt that it was going to work with 1080p. Next on the list, we'll try Plex. And I'm actually going to be streaming some 4K video from Plex. And we'll just do this one here. 4K, 60, 75 megabits per second. I think it's going to handle it quite well. It does with Windows, so we should get pretty good performance here in Android.
So yeah, it's looking really nice here. I do notice a couple stutters every once in a while, but overall it's really not that bad, given that this is 4K 60, 75 megabits per second. And by the way, with my settings in Plex, I do have it set to maximum, so we are streaming at that resolution and bitrate. Moving over to some native Android gaming, we have Minecraft. I'm set to 16 chunks. I do have fancy graphics on. And I'm connected over Bluetooth with an Xbox One controller. Bluetooth is working with Bliss OS on the Lark Box. So far, I've had really good luck with controller-based Android games on the Lark Box, but I do have to say that the Windows version of Minecraft, while I was running Windows 10, ran way better than this. It was absolutely amazing. Next up, we have Asphalt 9. This is another game that supports a controller from the Google Play Store, and as you can see, it's running pretty good here. It's definitely not as good as a high-end Android device, but it is playable. So now I wanted to move into a little bit of emulation. First up, we have some N64 using MooPen 64FZ from the Google Play Store, and performance here is great. I kind of expected it to be pretty decent. This N64 emulator does run really well on Android, even on low-end Android phones and tablets, so I expected it to run pretty decently here. But one game that usually struggles on lower-end chips is 007 Goldeneye, and as you can see here, it's running it pretty well. I mean, this is a problematic game for basically any N64 emulator, and it's doing a great job, I think. Moving over to something a little higher end, we have PSP using PPSSPP from the Google Play Store. Obviously, I have to use OpenGL because we can't get Vulkan support here, but I'm at 3x resolution with no frame skip, and performance, in my opinion, is great. So I was really hoping to get a little bit of GameCube emulation going on with Android. Um, and if I go to the Dolphin emulator, it'll load up. I can try to start a game, but it's going to crash on me. It'll give me a warning. And if I click on the background or anything here, it's just going to close this app down. So I can't get any kind of GameCube or Wii emulation going with Android right now on the Larkbox Pro. If I click on that, you see it just crashes out. But I was able to test the Dolphin emulator with some GameCube and Wii games in my Windows 10 video I did on the Larkbox Pro, and it actually runs really well. I was super surprised at how good this little chip handles GameCube and Wii emulation. So if you're interested in seeing how it runs that emulator, definitely check out the first video I did. I'll leave a link in the description. So overall, obviously Android does work on the Larkbox Pro. In my opinion, I wouldn't run this as an everyday operating system, but this is something I always like to test on these little mini PCs. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything out you want to see running on the Larkbox Pro, just let me know in the comments below. It can be an application for a certain operating system or a whole operating system itself. I'd like to test out some more stuff on this little PC. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.